going into my desktop, first thing you guys will need to do is download a few things. Um, so first thing is going to be something called NDI tools. Really, really useful piece of software. I would recommend everyone to download it. This will basically allow you to send different video feeds through your network. So if you don't have like a capture card or whatever, this will be super useful. And it's also mega useful to have uh, when you're sending, for example, from vMix to OBS, which is what I do. And I'll show you guys later how it works. Another piece of software you guys will need is something called BitFocus Companion. Uh, for the record, if I'm going too fast, then feel free to pause, go in the VOD. All of this will be saved so you can see everything afterwards. Um, so down a bit focus companion this is basically for your stream deck and if you don't own a stream deck you can do this through your phone or any device that is connected to your network and then the last thing you will need is vmix itself so you can download the trial on the vmix website and that will last for two months and basically gives you every single feature there is and then afterwards you need to buy a license for it or you can pay fifty dollars a month uh, i've got a license bought so i do need to buy it but the two month free trial is really, really good. And that's how I started learning. So first thing that happens is opening vMix, obviously. So let me get this to load. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Yeah, there we go. First thing I would recommend doing is going to settings on the top right to change a few things. I always change the preview color to green and my output color to red, because I'm just used to it like that. A lot of people have it in orange, which is just, yeah, it is what it is. I always change it to green preview and then red output. Next, you wanna to go to your performance and then select high input performance mode. A lot of people have this off and then it absolutely bricks their vMix and PC. So everything just dies and doesn't work. And next thing you wanna do is go to audio outputs and then enable A, B and C. This is basically for audio routing later on, which I'll explain what it does, but just enable all of these and then click okay. And then your vMix will restart. Cool. First things first is operating vMix. How does everything work? How does it compare to OBS? I assume a lot of people will be used to using OBS for broadcast. And obviously vMix is very scary at the beginning, but it's super, super mega simple to use. Everything is basically like OBS, but just laid out differently. So in OBS, you guys are probably used to having scenes and sources, but in vMix, everything is kind of just thrown in already. So everything is a source and a scene at the same time, basically. So as an example, I'm going to go ahead and add an image. There you go. This is an image of a white box uh, for the camera later on. So this is a source. And then I can also add stuff on top of it, which basically turns it into a scene in OBS. So with vMix, you can do a lot more. There's a lot more flexibility on everything. And it's honestly all, all about playing around. Once you get used to the software, it's mega easy, very quick to use, and you guys will not want to go back. So. To start off, uh, what I'm going to do is set up the scenes. So we're going to create a mock kind of broadcast. I created some assets uh, and reused some that I made like a year and a half ago. Uh, but basically, we're going to set up a small League of Legends show. Uh, we're going to have a starting soon screen, a break screen, a camera screen, a map veto screen, even though you don't really do map vetoes on League, but we're going to have that anyway. And then we're going to have some graphics that we can put on top. I'll show you guys how to animate everything and integrate it into Google Sheets or an Excel folder. So everything can work automatically. So first things first is creating my screens that I want. So the way I do things at the beginning is I add blank inputs. So on the bottom left side of the screen, you can click this little arrow, not the add input, the little small arrow on the bottom left and click blank. Boom. So now that you click blank, it adds a new input called color. I'm going to add a few of these in. There we go. And I have a bunch of scenes pretty much set up. Then I'm going to click on the cogwheel. I'm going to go to general and I'm going to rename them to FS underscore start. So I like to label my stuff. So FS stands for full screen, GFX for graphics and things like that. It's just basically for organization. So this is going to be my starting soon screen. The next one is going to be FS underscore two cam. This is going to be my two camera box where I'm going to have the casters in. Next, I'm going to do FS underscore map veto. That's going to be my map veto. I'm going to do FS underscore game, which is going to be my game. And what else do I have? The break screen, FS underscore break. You can reposition them wherever you want. There we go. And what else do I have? The break screen. Yeah, 
that's pretty much it. Okay, so starting off with creating my starting scene screen, I'm going to go to Photoshop and open up one of the assets that I created. So my starting scene screen right here. Uh, the FS stands for full screen. So that's just a thing I do myself so I don't get confused later on in the future and to keep things organized. So my starting soon screen is going to be two different things. It's going to be a small little background video that looks like this. And on top of it, I'm going to have a graphic on Photoshop that I'm going to import into vMix. So it's going to look something like this. So going back to vMix, you can add different inputs on the bottom left by clicking add input and then choosing what you want to add. So video, image, blah, blah, blah. Or you can simply drag and drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my background loop video and I'm going to drop it in here. And now, boom, it's right there. Now I can click play and I'm going to loop it. So now when this video ends, it will automatically restart and it's going to be looped forever. And the video is made in a perfect loop. Do you label lower thirds? Yes. So I label lower thirds as well as L3. It really depends on the graphic, um, but I sometimes call it GFX, sometimes L3. It really depends. So now that I added my background loop video that I want to have, I'm going to go ahead in the audio mixer here on the right. It's going to appear here as input six. So that's because I added it. If I move it somewhere else, now it's going to be input number three. So it doesn't really matter where you put it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it down and I'm going to take it off of master audio. So these are the four different audio outputs we have. And here you can select where this audio goes. So if I click on M, the, the audio from this input will go to master. If I click A, the audio from this will go to master and A. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because we don't need any audio from this background video. And I'm also going to turn this thing off. This is a cross mix or whatever it's called, where basically if you transition to it, it will turn it on. And if you transition out of it, it will turn it off. So this is just some auto mixing. And then you can right click here to just make it kind of disappear. Or you can also do it in the setting uh, and have visible and mix and just tick that off. So now it's no longer visible because we don't need audio from this. So now that we've got the background loop video, it's just chilling there, just going in a circle forever, basically. Um, I want to organize this a little bit because once I start adding a million inputs, everything's going to get super messy. So what you can do is you have different tabs here. And as you can see, I have a few labels there already. You can right click and it will come up with different things. So you've got full screen, audio inputs. It's just what I labeled it as. And I'm going to add one called GFX. I'm going to add one called media. So now I'm going to drag my full screens into the full screen. As you can see, the cog wheel will turn red. So this is going into a folder. And then this I'm going to put into media. So now when I click on these, it will filter the different inputs I have. So this is just to be more organized. I'm putting all my full screens into the full screen folder, my media into media, graphics into graphics, inputs into inputs, and audio into audio, just so I can be organized and it's pretty easy for me to navigate around. And then the all folder, you'll have everything there, regardless of what folder you put it in. So this is just more of an organized thing that I would really recommend doing. Otherwise, it's pretty pretty annoying and thank you for the sub appreciate it a lot as you can see i uh down here on the bottom side of the screen where my mouse is i created a custom css thing had uh, someone help me with it so it can look all nice cool so moving on now that i've got these sorted i want to add this media player so this background loop video into one of these so i click on the cog wheel i go into layers slash multi view and as you can see, there's numbers 1 to 10. 10 being the top of the stack and then 1 being at the bottom. So I'm going to put on 1 the background loop video. And now this input will have this playing. So if I pause this, my full screen start will also be paused. So this is now basically baked into this little scene, I guess we could call it. So click on the little cog wheel, go to layer slash multi view, and you can add whatever you want here. Like I could even add the break screen, the camera screen or whatever on top. So this is right at the bottom. Next, what we want to do is I want this graphic to be able to go straight into vMix. So one thing we'll have to do is recreate this using GT Title Designer, which is probably the most important and probably my favorite tool in vMix itself. Over here on the bottom right, you've got the little hamburger menu. You can click GT Title Designer and it's going to open up something that looks like paint. There we go. Is 10 the limit of things you can overlay? Yes, so 10 is the limit of what you can overlay. However, 
if you want to do more than 10, you can make multiple sources. So you can stack stuff on one source and then just add that source on top on layer 10. So technically, you can have infinite stacks of what you want to do. So yeah, as Cadenator said, yes and no, basically. So moving on to GT Title Designer, this is what's going to put our graphics into the software. So on the bottom right hand side, the hamburger menu, GT Title Designer is going to boot this up, which looks like it's paint. It's, it looks terrible, but it's really good. What you can do is you can file import PSD. So I'm going to go into my Photoshop file. I'm going to go ahead and delete the bottom layer. And then I'm going to file save as and I'm going to put it here, make a new folder called GT, and I'm going to call this starting soon. Boom. Now I'm going to go here, import PSD, go into my shared folder, and GT, click starting soon and click open. And now this will load a bit, and boom. It's going to load the graphic that I made in Photoshop in here as different layers, so you can toggle them off as you wish, basically. However, one annoying thing that does happen is the fonts, they always change, which is really annoying because if I add like a Photoshop file with like 50 different text files for like a leaderboard, I have to redo everything manually. It's super, super frustrating. So, ah, and it has to be RGB. I did not know that. That's one thing you learn every day. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna fix the font over here. So the font I'm using is industry. So I'm gonna go ahead and find it, industry. Industry black italic. So let's put that one in. And then over here, I'm gonna put industry again. There we go. So now I've got this made here. And the cool thing is about GT Title Designer is you can edit any text that you made from Photoshop. So you can write whatever you want. So it's super useful to change on the fly basically. So. Now that I've got this, I want to put a little small animation onto this, which is also really simple. You can click on individual layers here, go to animations, and then transition in and transition out. These are basically animations you have when you go into the scene or out of the scene, or when you put the graphic on or off. So on transitions in, I'm going to select the whole layer, and I'm just literally going to do a super simple animation and have it fly in from the side. So transition in, fly, style, cubing easing in and out just to smooth out the movement a little and I'm going to click play. So now it's going to do that but it's a bit too fast so I'm going to enable change the duration to two seconds. Boom so now I have a two second transition and this graphic flies in. I'm going to click save, save as and I'm just going to call this starting soon. Going to click OK, save, go back to vMix and a really cool thing is what you can do with vMix and titles, instead of going to add input, going to title, and then looking for it, clicking browse, the last title you make will automatically be done here. So you can click starting soon, and now it's right there. So now we have this graphic. When you click play, it shows you how it animates on. And then you can right click on it, go to title editor, and choose what is written in here. So break, BRB, starting soon. And then this is also the really good bit. If you're used to OBS, you'll use something like Snaz to do a countdown timer. But with this, it's a million times easier. You can go to settings on this little input, change the duration to, for example, 15 minutes, display format to minutes and seconds. OK, click play. And now I'm going to have a 15 minute timer directly from vMix. So you don't need Snaz or any sort of external software to help you with this. It's all pretty much there. Then I want to attach this graphic. I'm going to rename it to gfx underscore start timer. I'm going to throw this into the graphics and I want to put it on top of my starting soon screen. So I'm going to go on the cog wheel, multi view, and I'm going to put it on top gfx start timer. There you go. So now it's there. So every time I transition to or from it, it will do the animation at the beginning. But as you can see, the timer is still going. So I cut back to it and boom, the animation happens. And this is all done from a Photoshop file, going into GT Title Designer, and then changing a few animations. Super quick and simple, but you can do some really good stuff if you do a lot of it. You can basically do anything you want on vMix as long as you're creative enough. You can even add image sequences from like a After Effects file, which I tried doing a while back. It's super tedious to do, but it works. 
And if you want to update it or change the animation, for example, I want to make it fly in from the bottom, all you do is click Save on GT, go back into vMix, and right click, reload, and boom, now it's going to go in from the bottom. So every time I transition to the scene, starting soon is going to go in from the bottom. So that's super nice and simple. We've got the animated background in the back, and that's done. So let's call that our starting soon screen done. You can make it whatever way you want. You can make it look however you want. Uh, but this is a very simple animation that you can tie into pretty much everything. Uh, and to spice it up a little bit, you can also animate each bits individually. So let's say after this box flies in, I want to have the text do another animation. So I'm going to click on my time. I'm going to do another animation, expand from up. And then I'm going to delay it by two seconds. So now it's going to go up. And then it's going to show the text like that. But it looks a bit bad, so I'm going to do it from a different direction. This way. There you go. Perfect. I'm going to save that. Back to vMix. Reload. And now i got a bit more of an advanced animation. Now imagine if you make some really good graphics with this or something that you already have. Animating it is super simple. Takes like a few minutes. And it looks really nice compared to just having it just pure static. And I'll show you guys what we can do afterwards with some cameras, uh, which looks really, really nice. So moving on, uh, we want to do our break screen. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go to the cogwheel, layers multi-view. I'm going to go add our background loop video. And then on top, I want to add this animation again. But I want to change the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-add it again. So it's the same thing, but I'm just going to rename it to something else. I'm going to call it GFX Break Timer. And now title editor by right clicking and changes to be right back. So now I have the same graphic, but because I re-added it again, it's basically another instance. It's another input so I can reuse it as many times as I want. I'm going to throw it to my graphics, click on the cog wheel, layers multi-view, and then add it on. So now I have one for a break and one for starting soon. Now let's say I want to move this to the middle of the screen. It might seem a little complicated or you might not know how to do it, but it's super simple. You click on the cogwheel, you click layers multi-view, and then whatever input you want to change or move, all you do is click edit. And then here you can hold left click down here. If you hold shift and left click, you can zoom in and out. And then you can reset, or you can use this. You can also use a scroll wheel on these little lines, so you can get a really accurate uh, measuring on where you want to move stuff. But... Let's say I want to move it over to the right, so the x-axis, I'm going to put it right there, and boom. So that's my input moved. So now I have a starting soon with this graphic on the left, and then be right back with a graphic on the right. Cool. Next thing I'm going to move on is adding cameras and adding casters into the broadcast, which is really, really nice with the way vMix has everything built in. So first of all, what I'm going to do is go to the screen that I created. I'm going to go and delete the bottom layer delete this layer so I'm just going to have the cams space for the names and then some little graphics underneath cool one thing you're going to make sure you do as well is rasterize everything I saw someone said it in chat earlier as well if you don't rasterize your layers and you have a smart object sometimes the input if you import into from PSD it's going to bug out on GT title designer so I'm going to go ahead and save I'm going to go into GT. I'm going to make a new graphic, 1080p. I'm going to go File, Import PSD, and I'm going to choose the dual camera screen. I'm going to click Open. And now I have my caster boxes pretty much imported layer by layer. So I want to add a small animation to them. Uh, let me also change the font because it seems a bit messed up. Do -do -do. Industry, black italic, industry, yeah, let's do this one, industry bold italic. So, caster one, caster two, and I want to have this box kind of animate in from under. So, the bottom layers are right there, and we have these and these. You can also rename them on Photoshop, and I'll come renamed here, but because I'm super messy with my files and I do everything in a rush a lot of the time, I don't name anything. So things are called logo big white and they have layer six copy to. So I'm really messy with my Photoshop files. So apologies for that in advance, but 
I kind of do everything as fast as I can. Uh, so everything is always all over the place. But uh, to create this animation, I'm going to go to animations. And whenever I transition to this scene, I'm going to want this little bar to slide out from the bottom or from the top. And then I want it to say caster 2. So what I normally do is I look at the different animations there are. You have a reveal animation. I'm going to make it reveal from the top. Click play. It does this. I want to make it a little faster. So I'm going to change the duration to 0 0.5. And now it's a lot faster. And I'm going to change the style from linear to cubing easing in and out to change the speed of the animation. So it's still 0 0.5 seconds, but the in and out of it is a bit nicer. So it's not all linear. Boom, so we have that. Uh, we also have this little feather effect that I'm not a fan of. So you can click on effects and then take feather to zero. And now it should be gone. There we go. So now we have this small animation. Looks fairly nice. I will then want this little blue bar to come out as well. So I'm going to want it to reveal from the right side like this. But I want it to reveal after this has come down. So. I'm going to delay this by 0 0.5 seconds, cubing, easing in and out. As Fraser said, use this for everything. This is, this is literally the best thing ever. You can have it looking like this, or you can have it looking like this, which looks a million times nicer, a million times smoother. So now, as you can see, I got a really nice animation from a really simple box. And then I want to animate the name on. I'm going to do expand from the left. Let's see how that looks. And I'm going to delay it by 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, that looks really bad. I'm just going to put it from the bottom. Cubing, easing in and out as always. Boom. And I forgot I have Steam open. Let me turn it off. Boom. There we go. So now I have this animation here. Cast the two. And it comes in like this. So, really nice. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So, just to go through everything again. You click on what you want to animate. You click on transition in. So whenever you transition to this graphic or to the scene that has this graphic on, or whenever you overlay this on top, it will run this animation transition in. So I'm going to choose reveal. I'm going to choose from the side duration 0 0.5 style cubing, easing in out. So it's going to make an animation like that. And I'm just going to change where it comes from and the duration of it. You can do whatever you want with this and then getting rid of the annoying feathering. Click on effects, feather, take that down to zero. So now we have a nice animation like that. Now this thing as well, I want to move this. So I'm going to click on reveal, reveal from the left, delay it for one second, and then cubing easing in and out, and change the duration to 0 0.5. There we go. Ah, this is the one. Now it should be the exact same. There you go. And our last thing is to animate the text. So expand after one second, easing in and out from the bottom. Boom. Oh, I changed it wrong again. There you go. One, 0 0.5. So now it's pretty much the same across the board. They should be identical. Now that this is done, I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'm going to call this cams. Boom. Go into vmix add title, I'm going to add cams, and boom, now I have this inside. Now I want to have this animated background there as well. So is it possible to set preferences? Uh, I don't think you can set preferences on this. I haven't known of a way to do it. I think you just have to do it manually each time, uh, which is really frustrating. But if there is a way, I'd be happy to learn. Uh, I've used Beamix for thousands of hours, and I always learn something new every time using it. Um, so there are probably shortcuts other than what I'm showing you guys, but it's basically, yeah, I, I don't think there's a way to set preferences on that. But anyway, moving on to this, there you go. So we want to add our cameras on. I'm going to click on the cog wheel, layers multi view. On the bottom layer, I'm going to add my background loop video. For the sake of this kind of stream, it's, can you select multiple objects to animate? Yes. So you can do multiple objects at the same time. Um, but they cannot have any animations on them. But you can also create layers. So if you create a layer like this, everything that you have inside the layer, you can animate it as well. So if I do fly from above, it's going to fly in. 
but it's also going to have its own individual animations as well. But yeah, this software is really good, but it's really bad at the same time. So as everyone in chat is saying, you can do it, you sometimes can't. It's just very messy, uh, but it is good once you set everything up. You might have to adjust a bunch of values, but um, this probably takes the longest out of any broadcast that I implement the for just doing everything on GT Technical Designer. So I'm going to turn it off. Don't save changes to this. I've got my cams here. When I click play, it's going to animate this on and whatever name you put in. So I'm going to put Fraser here with an S and then I'm going to put Fermé here. So caster on the left, Fraser, caster on the right, Fermé and whatever name you want to put in, it will automatically go there. Oh, hell yeah. It's Prius. I'm going to put you in here. Fermé, you're being replaced by Prius. There you go. I'm sorry, Fermé, you're being replaced by Prius. The, uh, the only man himself. Cool. So now that we've got this graphic, I'm going to rename it to GFX underscore cams. Boom. I'm going to throw it into GFX. Go into my FS underscore two cam input that I made. Click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and add here on layer five, the GFX cams. So the reason I added it on layer five is because we need to add cameras underneath. So here I got GFX cams. And I want to put in a camera here and a camera here. Now, one thing that we need to do is actually get the input from the casters. Now, the best way to do this is using vMix Call. This is similar to OBS Ninja. It's the easiest way to basically get a caster to connect and see the program feed instantly. So click on video call. There you go. You guys can open this link and then this will automatically send your camera to me. So if you want to do it, go for it. But it's just going to, yeah, it's just going to put your camera on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to set up another one. Click OK. So now I have two call inputs. You can right click on them, click Open Call Manager. And here you have different passwords and different calls. So sometimes if you see a caster go on Twitter and they post a selfie of their screen, sometimes on the top of their browser, they're going to have a link like this that they'd never know that they're leaking. And if you type it in, you can pretty much get on the broadcast if it's a remote one. Um, people have leaked it in the past before. It was pretty funny, but no one really knew what it was. So no one accessed it. But if you see someone with this link and you type it in, your camera will basically go to whatever vMix software is using it. So there have been casters who leaked it in the past. Um, but yeah, vMix call is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you guys use it for player cams. You can basically use this for anything. If you're a normal streamer, you can even connect vMix call to your phone and then go anywhere you want. As long as you connect to the internet, you can connect to vMix call. So now that I've got these two made, I'm going to go ahead and they are call ceiling. So I can see someone is trying to connect. Ceiling. There you go. Yeah, I have no idea whose head is this, um, but it's someone's. There you go. So we got ceiling connected. Oh, hell yeah. That's uh, War Chalk or Miha. He's uh, one of the observers uh, that focuses mainly on Battle Royale games. And he's also Onyx on Halo. And he's nuts at the game. And he carried me for a few matches. But basically, we've got his audio coming in. And we've got his camera. So, one thing we want to do is go ahead and put his camera under here. So, I'm going to go ahead and choose Call Ceiling. Going to click Edit. And then move him down. Now we have come up with a small issue. The camera isn't exactly in frame with the overlay. There's a bit sticking out. So the way to fix that, the way I do it is I create a virtual input. So you can right click on the call, create a virtual input, and it makes a second version of him basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and in the files that I sent to you guys, I have something called cam L and cam R. I'm going to take these into vMix. And these are my basically keys. So this camera will go on top of the white and it's going to get rid of the black color here. So your virtual call, right click, create virtual input, then go into the cogwheel here, go into color key. So here you can green screen stuff. And then you have a key slash fill input and choose cam L. So now this camera has this little edge that is gone, but this camera still has it. So going back into my scene, layers. Instead of having call ceiling, I'm going to have virtual call ceiling. And now as you can see, that is gone. So that is my virtual camera setup here. 
Then I'm going to do the same thing with this camera. I'm going to create a virtual input. Cogwheel, go to color key, key fill input, cam R. Then I'm going to go into the cams again. I'm going to throw it in there. Boom, virtual call R. Resize it. And then move it. There you go. Boom. What audio input is taken from VMIX? Yeah, so VMIX call will not. Sorry, what was your question? What audio? Okay, yeah, so VMIX call has different websites that it has. Um, you've got the default VMIX call that you can send to someone. It doesn't really give you control over everything. So this VMIX. .at, it's a pretty bad link. So whatever your input is on your browser is what the audio is going to be coming through, which is really bad. So you could have your webcam mic on and not be able to change it. However, you can go and type in advanced. So if I open a text file, advanced.vmixcall.com, this will open an interface with more controls for the person who is connected. So if you type in the password there, you can basically have more controls, change your inputs and all that stuff. There's also beta.vmixcall.com. Uh, I don't use this link, but it has some other features. But advanced.vmixcall.com, you want to send this to your caster and give them a password so they can change everything there rather than going through the annoying browser settings. So advanced.vmixcall.com is super useful to have. So let me get rid of that. Now that we've got Fraser here in his forehead, it's not really Fraser, uh, but we'll just say that's his forehead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move all of these into the GFX pad tab and then take these and put them into inputs so I don't clog up my space here. Boom. Perfect. Is the latency for cancer a problem? No. So the latency is really, really good. It's basically nearly instant. I, I've done shows with people from Australia and they had zero issues at all. So they receive the feed and then send back the audio and it's pretty much not noticeable at all. Unless someone has a really bad connection, you can go and right click on the call and then send them a worse feed. So I'm going to go ahead and send them an 800 kbps feed. So now the quality they receive is worse, but it's not really bad. Like casters don't sound off sync. There's not latency for the viewer, but it's somehow, sometimes it's, sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it isn't. It really depends on the internet, but I've never had any issues. As long as the caster has good internet, it'll be all fine and won't be a problem. Cool. So moving on to the next bit. As you can see, the camera is slowly going up. I'm not sure if it's intentional or it's falling, um, but here we've got the two cams set up. So every time we transition to it, it's going to have this animation. Boom. Yeah, so as uh, someone said in chat, one thing I noticed is you cannot choose to lower quality of only one caller. Yeah, so if you lower the quality for someone, let's say to really low quality, it will also lower it to the other call, um, which is... A bit frustrating, but it's something that you kind of have to deal with with vMix. It just it just is what it is. So if you lower quality for one person, it lowers it for both. Uh, so as the audio from the cast is coming from vMix, how do you guys communicate them? Yeah, so when a caster connects to vMix, as you can see, I've got ceilings audio coming through here in the audio bar. And you can click on the cog wheel and do a lot of settings. You can add a delay, add a gain, compressor, noise gate, literally anything. EQ, you have infinite settings you can do. You can even change the microphone to mono if it's coming in from like only the left ear. So the casters normally, what Catenator said uh, that I'm going to move on soon, um, they hear only what you're sending to them. So if you right click on the caster, you do audio source, I'm sending them bus A. So everything that's coming through master, so all their audio and everything, they cannot hear master. They can only hear what's coming through bus A which is this audio output that I said to enable earlier in the settings. So if you weren't here, you can go back to the VOD. But basically, anything that has A on the bottom of it, they'll be able to hear. So if this caster has A ticked, he'll be able to hear this caster. But if it's unticked, this person won't. However, the stream, because it's ticked on M and it's going to master, will be able to hear everything. So that's kind of the way the audio, audio outputs work. So audio output A is going to the vMix calls and then the master audio is going out to the stream. So you can right click and choose which audio source the casters get. So you can have them bus A, bus B, bus C. 
Now, another cool thing is with this is I also use this when I'm working a production. So I make a vmix call, but I send it to myself and I give myself a multi-view for the internet. So if I'm working a remote show that only has like one monitor, I can just put vmix call on my second monitor and just full screen it and then it works fine. Oh, hell yeah. Cheers for the sub. Appreciate it a lot. I'm still new to the streaming thing, so yeah, but we've got two subs now. And I also commissioned some emotes um, from Han Josie. She, uh, she's a really good artist. Recently did a t-shirt with Fnatic, which was amazing. All right, moving on back to our cameras. So here we got the casters in, all working. If you want to have someone come in to cast, you just send them a password and a link. They turn it on and boom, they're connected and they see everything that is being outputted. How many calls can you make on a full license? Um, I'm not actually sure. Uh, I don't remember the exact amount of calls you can make, uh, but I know with the trial you have unlimited and with the 50 a month version, sorry, not unlimited, it's eight uh, or whatever it is. But yeah, eight, eight for pro, yeah, there you go. I've got the vMix 4K version, so it's not the highest one, but I think it's like the second highest maybe. Um, so yeah, I've got four different cores that I can have. Perfect. So moving on, uh, we're going to do our map vetoes. So we've got our two cam done, which is just the caster names. Going back to our map veto, this is the next thing we're going to do. So the map veto graphic that I provided for you guys looks something like this. It's very simple. Um, going to get rid of this background, get rid of this. Set up the Photoshop file, rasterize it. Boom. Now this should work. Let me also rasterize this because I don't want to have issues. There we go. Perfect. So. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so Ninja Browser would call VMix. Yeah, so one thing with VMix is if you use a browser source similar to OBS, you can click browser, web browser here. You can access it, turn it on. If you add more than two, your vmix will literally just die. It will start choking. It's just going to have mega issues. So I wouldn't recommend making more than two at most browser sources because then it's just going to screw up hard. Um, but yeah, let me go back to what I was talking about, the map vetoes. So here's the map veto graphic. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Going to go into GT Title Designer. So hamburger on the bottom right, GT Title Designer. Turn it on. Boom. Okay. Gonna go file, import PSD, and map veto. So now this is a really, really useful thing that I didn't know about for a while. I actually got taught by someone. I can't remember who taught me. It might have been Fraser who taught me this. Uh, but basically, as you can see, I have my different folders. I've got my ban one, ban two, and my pick one. But I need to put these icons in. Where are these icons? This icon goes into band one. Just reorganize it. Where's this other icon? Band two. There we go. Oh, why did this move? There you go. I'm just going to throw in there. What am I doing? There you go. Perfect. Let me re import this because I keep losing the graphic for some reason. My veto. Come on, import. Don't crash on me. Perfect. So this will go into layer two. The top. Oh, why is this not visible? That is really screwing with my mind. All right, whatever, I'll just undo it. So. What I'm going to show you guys now, I'm just going to get rid of these icons because they're tilting me and not working for some reason. Boom. We've got ban, ban, pick, and then the graphic of the map. So. Band one, band two, band three. So I made these on Photoshop and I put them into different folders. And if you put them into GT Title Designer, they will come up as different layers. Now you can't have a folder inside of a folder. You can only have one kind of folder that goes into Photoshop. If you have a folder inside of a folder, you won't be able to import. So you can only have kind of one layer of folders, if you know what I mean. Can you do a transition based on a mask for an object? Uh, you can. You can do it manually through a lot of bullshittery, I'm going to call it, um, but not on GT Designer from what I know of. 
uh, you'd have to do it manually inside of vmix and kind of macro it. I did a few things before where I would mask something using the key slash fill uh, and then have it move, but it was a really big pain and I just couldn't be bothered with it. Okay, cool. So, with the map vetoes, I'm going to go ahead and hide these. Where's the pick? Pick two. That goes into there. Ah, huh, that is really, really weird. Why is this not showing up? Whatever. Okay. I think my GT title design is just messing up. But what I was going to show you guys is there's something called pages inside of GT title designer. So when you transition transition in, I'm going to make everything invisible. So I'm going to click on my band one graphic. I'm going to click none. Where is it? Hidden. Yeah, there you go. Hidden. So when I transition in, this is going to be hidden and you won't be able to see it. Band two, going to click hidden. So now these two are hidden when I transition in. And I'm going to do the same for the last one. So when I transition in, everything is going to be hidden. Now you have something called pages, page one to 10, and these will do certain functions. So page one, when you click on page one, inside of vMix, it will do a certain animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this fly up from the bottom. So upon clicking page one, this will fly in like that. However, this I want hidden and this I want hidden. So I'm going to click hidden and hidden. So page one makes this fly in. So this is the first map veto. Then I want the second map veto to come in. So I'm going to go to page two. This is already on the screen, so I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to click on the number two, make it fly in from the bottom. And then I'm going to hide the last one hidden. So now this will fly in and this is still hidden. I'm going to click page three. This is there already. This is there already. So all I need to do is get the third veto and make that fly in. So I'm going to click on that and now it flies in. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this veto. Save. Go back into vMix. Create a new blank. Sorry, not create a new blanking, but I already have one here. I'm going to go to add title veto. And here I have my map veto. I'm going to go to my fs underscore map veto. Oh, is my camera not working? God damn it. I think it's because it's overheating, but it is what it is. Um, Because it's my camera that I got on the other side of the screen. Or room, sorry. So we'll just leave it like that. Let me actually go touch it, see if it works or not. It's probably broken. Is it overheated? There we go. Now. Yeah, I think it's just overheating. Cool. It is what it is. All right, moving back to our map vetoes. Click on the cog wheel again. Go to layers multi view. Put in the animated background on the back. Oh, yeah, it's gone again. Nice. And it's gone. And it's gone. I'd, I'd just leave it on the Elgato no input. Or oh, can I do this? Oh, that's the wrong one. I'll just turn it off for now. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Uh, nope, that's the wrong thing. What am I disabling? Webcam. Boom, there you go. Now it's off. All right. So I've got my background loop input here, and I'm on top. I'm going to add the graphic that I put in, the veto. I'm going to also rename this so it's not messy. GFX underscore veto. I'm going to throw it into the GFX section. So here I got all my graphics. Back to here, I got my veto. So when I transition to this, there's nothing there. That's because on GT Title Designer, I have my transition in on hidden. Move what that quick? What did I move really quick? Okay, I'll, I'll just carry on until you, uh, you, you let me know what I moved really quick. So I'll show you again. Add the Vita to GFX. You hold left click, you drag it and drop it. So, boom. You can just drag and drop into the different folders rather than going into settings and category. Cool. Yeah, you can drag a lot of things on vMix that people don't know about. Anyway, going back into the veto, but I dragged the wrong one back. There you go, here's my map veto. If you right click the screen or the input, you can click page one 
map number one is going to animate in. You click page two, veto number two will animate in. You click page three, veto three is going to animate in. And then if you click page one again, these ones will just reset basically. So if you're doing a map veto, you have up to 10 pages to make animations. So this is what I do for CS, for example, where you have more than three maps. I have an animation for each basically. And then you can right click title editor and then change whatever text you have. But because I made these um, straight from a Photoshop file and I already have all these preset images, uh, I can't really change stuff. Okay, if the bands were different, now that you need to set up GT Title Designer in a different way. So, instead of having these images as layers from Photoshop, you will manually need to create um, a, let me remove this, a file inside GT Title Designer. So, on the left, you have this here, an image. You can basically load an image in. So, I'm going to go to the map vetoes I made, copy this, make a new, boom. So there you go, this is my map veto. I'm gonna save it, PNG, and I'm gonna call this map one. So I have my graphic of a map. I'm gonna to go to GT. I'm gonna load this map one. So now I have this graphic as map one and I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna put it into ban one. Boom, there we go. Now I'm gonna take this again, this image. I'm gonna put one inside of ban two. And I'm going to remove this, remove that. There you go. And I'm going to take this image again and put it inside of my other pick. There you go. So this image right there. Yeah, GT grid snapping is terrible. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. And it really annoys me. So now I'm going to save this and go back to my vMix. So page one, page two, page three. I accidentally deleted the little white bar at the bottom. But what you can do is you can right click, title editor, and now you have these image sources. So on GT Title Designer, if you add something as an image using this image button on the left, you can then change it dynamically. So if I draw on this like that and change it and save it, I'm gonna call this map two. What you can do is then click browse, GT and go map two. So now this graphic will be map two. So you can change it however you want before a game, pretty much. So I'll change that to map two. This is changed. And this will all work with the animation as well. So yeah, this is a lot simpler than using a web overlay and having a web interface. I will actually show you how to make an interface to control these in a little bit as well. But now that we've got the map veto, we have that. Next, what we want to do is have our game. So my FS underscore game. It really depends on how you want to add the game to your stream. So if you're using OBS, you sometimes use RTMP, SRT to send feeds across the internet. So here you can add SRT, SRT caller, listener, and rendezvous. And you can also add RTMP in vMix. So you can add feeds this way. Uh, and there's a lot of control you have over everything pretty much. You can also send SRT directly from vMix to vMix, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that. There's a lot of tutorials on the internet. Um, the simplest way I found of sending feeds across, especially if you're new, um, you can click on web browser and then type in youtube.com and then insert a stream that your friend is streaming, for example, full screen it. And that's for brand new beginners. It's probably the best way to send a feed across the internet. So just have someone stream to YouTube and then you full screen their feed. And that's pretty much it. So that's what I would recommend if you're brand new. Otherwise, you can just to RTMP, SRT, or whatever you want. Now, in my case, I have another PC on the side. Let me also turn off my camera so it stops overheating. And I can turn it back on later. There we go. Let me go back in my seat. Perfect. So, I have everything on my second PC. So, everything's connected to my Elgato. So, I can go to Add Input, Camera, and then choose Camera. Camera Link 4, click OK. And it should work. Or is it dead? Or is it cam three? It's one of them. Ah, I know why it's not working. Because I don't have OBS open on my other PC. Should work in just a second. There we go. Yep. Perfect. So here I've got a replay from a game of League. 
and now it's inside of my vmix. Perfect. So here's my input camlink pro hdmi4. I'm going to rename this to input underscore observer one. So this is my observer input. I'm going to drag that to my inputs here so it's along the other calls and I'm going to hide them by right clicking just so I don't have many of them open. I'm going to go back to my full screens fs underscore game. I'm going to click on the cog wheel, go to layers slash multi view and on the bottom I'm going to put my observer feed. Now I want to add in a overlay on top of everything so it looks nice. I've included a HUD example that I made. It doesn't work because it's just a still image. Um, so I'm going to go and rename this to gfx underscore HUD. Now, with a HUD like this, oh, I clicked the wrong button. With a HUD like this, you can also do this in GT Title Designer. So I have this custom software uh, made by someone called Dan Shields, where this basically takes a screenshot of the observer feed every... 500 milliseconds and then it deciphers the data and then turns it into text files and then you take those text files and you put them into the hood so this will actually work in correspondence to the game uh, but i don't have that set up on my other pc at the moment uh, so this is just a still image of the hood that i designed for this so the way you would do it is go into gt title designer and you can right click title editor and click data source and you can add basically text files into this um, I'll show how that works a bit later on, but this is just an example HUD that I have. So I'm going to put this graphic into my GFX folder, go to my game, click on Lays Multi View, and put this on top. So imagine this is basically that. I'm going to click Play on my other PC, on pause. There you go. And now there should be audio coming through when I transition to this. So this thing that I said earlier, this little cross fade button. Yeah, Dan always makes cutlery packets. So this crossfade button, whenever I transition this scene onto program, which is on the right side, the audio will automatically turn on. So there you go. Now the audio is on. And now it's off. On. Off. So this does it automatically. I like to do this for games, uh, but for music, I normally have this off and then I automatically set triggers to fade music in between scenes, which I'll show you guys how to do a bit later on. So this is my game right here. I'm going to turn it down a bit because for me it's super loud. Yeah, this is basically audio follow video. Um, so I'm going to keep it there. The game is working, so we've set up a starting soon screen, a break, a camera screen with inputs, a veto screen, and the game screen. Now, that our basic broadcast is basically set up, I'm going to get into the things that are a little bit more advanced and not many people use. So first thing I'm going to do is get some audio in. So I've got the audio, I've got my break playlist and bed music. Bed music is basically stuff to put under the casters or under the graphics. Um, I normally have a lot more audio in broadcasts I do, but for this specific scenario, I've only got the bed music and the playlist. Now what I like to do is I like to turn it on and I like to loop it. So this is always playing and looping. I turn it down all the way to zero and I turn off the audio follow video or the crossfade and I turn it on so it's always playing. So as you can hear, they're both playing at the same time and it's a mess of audio. It's really annoying. So I'm going to turn it down to zero. It's still playing on loop, but it's always there. So if you accidentally bump it up, it will play on stream. But the reason I do this is so I can make it dynamically follow video and also fade in and out um, and have a nicer kind of feel to it. So I'm going to drag this to my audio inputs. And let's say for my starting soon screen, I want this to have my break music. So you can click on triggers and you can create a trigger called on transition in. So on transition in, when I transition to this scene, it will do a function. You can make it do literally anything you want. You can be as creative as you want. You can make it do anything. You can even make it stop a stream after like 30 seconds if you go to a thanks for watching stream uh, screen. So I'm gonna search up fade and you have set volume fade and then input, I'm gonna choose bed music or break playlist and here you have volume 0 to 100 and then milliseconds so I'm going to put when I transition to it I want it to go to 50 volume in comma 1500 milliseconds and add so now if I go to this when I transition to my start screen the audio will go up automatically 
and I want to do the same thing on transitioning out. So I can click on this again, change it to transition out, change that to zero and click add. So now I have on transition in, make it go to 50, on transition out, make it go to zero. So now when I go out, it will fade like that. So rather than cutting straight away, this will do a small fade between everything, which is really nice. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing on the cameras. So cogwheel, triggers, on transition in, I want a set volume fade on the input being bed underscore music. I want this on 15% volume and I want this to be over 1,500 milliseconds and same on transition out. And I want to put that to zero. So now if I show you, if I go to the start screen and I go to my camera screen, it will cross mix the audio perfectly pretty much. So that's the way I do it. Um, and this is way too quiet, so I need to change this. So triggers, and I'm going to make that 30. Edit. So now like that. There you go. So now when I cut, it will automatically do it on the transition point. Now that I have audio automatically set up, um, if I transition out of this to the game, for example, the audio will also go down. You can do the same with the game audio, um, but I just have it on follow video because I'm too lazy pretty much. So now that we have automatic audio following on all our inputs, I'm going to add a stinger, which is probably one of the most important things to have. So click, you can click on add input, go to image sequence size stinger. And as you can see, I got a million different ones from a bunch of different shows that I did. Um, you can click browse and then you go to where your stinger is saved. Yeah, I am pretty lazy with integrating stuff, but that's the best way to do things. Because then you do it fast and efficiently. Cool. Stingers. I've got my stinger saved here. I've got my main stinger, which is exported as a bunch of PNGs that are transparent. So, if you get a stinger given or a transition which isn't in this form, let me just quickly add it. There you go, it's added right here. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. What you can do with Vmix is there's a built-in Stinger conversion tool. So, is it Media Converter? Nope, it's the other one. So you click on the burger menu and go to Vmix Video Tools. And here you have a little box that pops up. You can click Create Image Sequence. You choose a source file, so you can choose your QuickTime Transparent Stinger animation. And what you can do with this is take it and turn it into a image sequence. So this will automatically convert a QuickTime video, a video of transparency into a PNG sequence. Um, so I always use PNG sequences in vMix um, and you can also use a T-bar for it as well. So let me show you. If I go to Stinger 1, my Stinger is this. The duration is 74 frames and I'm gonna change my cut point to the middle of it. You can basically do, let me, Stinger one. Oh, that is the wrong stinger that I added. Let's ignore that one. That's from a podcast I did. Do, 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 do. There you go. This is the one that should be it. That's a random MSI stinger. Let's uh, let's ignore that. Is this the one? Yes, this is the one. Perfect. Yeah, exactly what Fraser said. So. VMix is a really amazing piece of software, but it's it can crash, it can do whatever. Yeah, so if this thing has audio, what do you do? So, what you can do with an image sequence is there's a little secret that you can do with it. Um, Fraser can probably tell you exactly what the name is, but if you have audio, what you can do is you can add an MP3 file and you have to call it the beginning of the transition. So, let's say this is the first frame. If you have an mp3 file, you need to call it something like, I'm going to add a text document here as an example. You call it this .mp3.png, and then when you call it this, it will play the mp3 sound while you do the stinger. So you can actually get audio in a uh, image sequence. So you can actually do this. Or, I think it's .wav, but it's, it's one of those ways. This will work, but it needs to be called the beginning 
of this. So once this frame plays, this audio will play as well. So yeah, a lot, of, like I said, there's a lot of people in the chat who've used vMix for thousands of hours, but never knew these things. Like vMix is a gold mine to do anything on. It's insane. Okay, if you cut it early. If you cut it early, you're kind of screwed. So it is what it is. So in that case, you'd want to use an MOV, but I never use MOVs. I only use image sequences. So yeah, so if you want to add audio to an image sequence, you have to put the MP3 in and call it the name of the first frame. So transition main 20001.mp3.png. So you can do it that way. Yeah, I always use image sequences. I just find them way better um, and just way better performance wise for me every time. All right, so going back to the image sequences, this is annoying, I'm gonna turn the audio down. To edit the stinger, on the bottom right, you have the overlay button. You can click on this and it will come up with overlay settings. Here you have overlay one, two, three, and four, and then you have stinger one, two, three, and four. So stinger one is what I just imported, the transition main. The duration is 225 frames, and I want it to cut the screen when it's on 125. So now when I press stinger one, it's gonna cut now and then come here. So now the audio should fade perfectly, pretty much. So now the audio will start cross-fading. So yeah, you can basically play around with the triggers that I set up earlier to make sure that it perfectly works with the stinger you made, essentially. Yeah, so it, it really depends on the system you're using, but my PC, I've got a 3090 and a really powerful CPU, so I don't ever have issues using stingers. Um, it's normally fine performance-wise, um, but I don't always do shows on my own PC. If I do it on like a remote setup, I don't, I don't have a show that is big enough to normally crash, because we normally have uh, a lot of different roles which are distributed between different PCs rather than having everything on one. So I don't really have much issues, but as Fraser and everyone said, it's already hit and miss with a lot of stuff on vMix. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes there's a bug, sometimes there isn't. Is there a trigger to restart a song at a certain point? So, there is a trigger to restart a song, but I don't think it's at a certain point. Ah, yeah, Fraser. <laughs> I know what you mean. Alright, so, let's say you want to restart a song okay from what i know you can't make it start on a certain point unless you edit it uh, but you don't have to edit it out of the software you can do it in vmix so if i go to my audio my break playlist and let's say i want the audio to start right here you can right click uh, is it why is this not working yeah there you go yeah you can go ahead and right click and do mark in so now the song will always start at this point yeah so that's the only thing you can do. I don't think there's a way to just trigger, make a trigger that starts at a certain point, sadly. You just have to do it this way. Or there's not a way that I know of, at least. But as we've seen, there's a lot of things you can learn with vMix. A lot of us use it for thousands of hours and still have stuff to learn because there's so many small shortcuts you can make. Um, but let's move the stinger over here to GFX. So now I have a... If I show you guys... I'll go to my starting soon screen. Boom, there we go. And then get my audio working because it's muted. Do do do. Audio. Oh, that's loud. Yeah, this will be available as a VOD afterwards. I don't expect everyone to follow everything I'm doing instantly because there's a lot of things going on. There you go. So here we got our starting soon screen, and we're going to move on to the two cam. So we're going to sting to it, and then audio will crossfade, the animation will come up with the names. Boom, we have that, and then we're going to go to our game, select it, we're going to sting to it, and then the audio will turn down. And now here we have our game. So this is essentially a very simple broadcast setup. Uh, with this knowledge, you can basically remake everything that you have on OBS on vMix. Did you learn all of this at uni? Um, Yes, yeah, so I went to university where they were supposed to be teaching this stuff, but 
I sadly didn't learn anything there, so I decided to quit and teach myself, which is why I'm here. Um, so, VMix is amazing to use, very easy to learn, so learn it yourself. Don't let anyone else tell you what to do, other than me. Listen to what I say, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I decided to quit uni because, yeah, I can teach other people myself. What audio levels are you doing for, like, music casters and games? So, audio level-wise for game casters and everything, I normally have a tech day. So the day before the show, I do, like, a tech rehearsal, and I just listen to everything um, separately through my other headphones. And I do, like, a small test stream and make sure all the levels are good. Um, and pretty much change it on a show-to-show -show basis. Sometimes I have a show that is more focused on visuals and music, so I turn the music up a little bit. And sometimes I don't really have much music to use, uh, but I always do it on a game-by-game -game basis. If I'm doing like a show for Warzone, I don't want the audio to be loud because with Warzone, there's no observing tools. You have to take Twitch streams. So the game audio is super quiet, barely hearable, um, because you can also hear the people that are playing that game. Yeah, so... Yeah, the playback audio scale is not the same as the output audio scale, yeah. So, what do you stream it to to preview it? So, I have a YouTube channel that I stream to, or I stream it to a secondary Twitch channel. Um, there's a lot of people that stream it to a secondary Twitch channel. Um, so, if you ever see a stream, there's probably a twitch.tv slash name of organizer underscore test that probably does it. Yeah, the perfect setup to show Warzone. Yeah. <laughs> Warzone has the best observing tools ever, where there is no observer tools and you have to watch Twitch streams that then have random ads that come on. Hell yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, Let's see what we've covered. I, pr I think we pretty much covered most of the basics. So we set up the screens, showed how to use GT Title Designer, how to add audio and stuff. Okay. Uh, what else was there? What else do I have in the folder? that's there that's there uh, that is pretty much it in terms of setting up a broadcast on vmix I, i'll just show a few more final bits um yeah this has been around for ages it's great yeah these assets are going to be available for download anytime pretty much so you can just type exclamation mark assets and then just download them they're going to be there for months probably so they're going to be there for a very very long time so you can get them anytime you want um, but the next thing I will show you guys is Companion BitFocus. This is the best thing ever if you don't have a Stream Deck or if you do have a Stream Deck. Um, if you can't afford one, it's this is also really good. It's basically a replacement for one. So, let me open this up. So, streaming to main broadcast or secondary Twitch isn't usually a problem. Yeah, so the reason I stream to a secondary channel is... To test so i don't ever stream to the main and secondary at the same time i always just stream to one or the other as a test so the day before the main broadcast i stream to a second channel to test if all the audio is working and then on the main day itself i stream to the main channel knowing that everything works and then knowing broadcast everything will break as you hit the live button so yeah will you show the replay mode so replay mode wise i'm going to do another session in about a week or so uh, a very big in-depth session on showing how uh, replays work, uh, including a load of uh, behind-the-scenes footage. Uh, so that will be next week. Um, but for now, I'm mainly focusing on this as a beginner's vmix kind of thing. So I've got a few th few more things to show, and then I'm going to be ending the stream. Uh, but then next week, I'm going to do a replay session. And then after that, I'm going to do a session on making graphics and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to have more advanced ones. Hey, thank you for the sub. Yeah, I'm going to teach you guys so you guys can steal our jobs. Hell yeah. Steal our jobs. Alright, so. Moving on to the next thing that I told you guys to download. Uh, BitFocus Companion. This thing right here. You click on it. And this will leak my IP and everything. So don't worry, you can send packets to me and DDoS me or whatever. I don't really care. It will end the stream sooner, so. Win-win. Hell yeah. Alright, there we go. Here we got. BitFocus Companion, click Launch GUI, and it's going to go ahead and turn on something like this. Boom. Yeah, you can. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you can DDoS my local host IP. That is true, Fraser. <laughs> Alright, so, it will open up something like this, BitFocus Companion. 
it's right there. You can use this to connect to another network. So as you can see, I've got VPNs, uh, so I can connect to a different, uh, for example, PC or different network and work there. But when you launch Companion, it will look like something like this. If you have a Stream Deck, I will turn it on here. There you go. This is my Stream Deck. I've got my toggle camera, which says Tog Cam, so let's just ignore that. Um, you can find something called Companion here. You can drag and drop the buttons on, which I will put on here on your Stream Deck. And boom. As you can see, there are a bunch of random buttons here. And those buttons are from vMix here in the button section. So. I've got these buttons that I made previously, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe this because it's not needed anymore. But, can I go to a new profile? Play like a new profile. There we go. And just add these buttons in. There we go. Oh, yeah, Felix got wiped. So, here is the companion app. When you turn it on at first, it's going to show an empty page like this. There's going to be nothing on there. I use the Stream Deck app with Companion because I also have other buttons on my Stream Deck that aren't from BitFocus Companion. So I use Unity for comms, so I put it on there as well. So I have to do a mixture. Alright, so when you open this program, click Launch GUI, it's going to open the screen. You will need to add vMix and then point it to your vMix. So add by search, you can type in vMix, click Add, and it's going to add this here. So here you've got your target IP. Um, which is basically targeting your local host here, your own PC. If you have a vMix running on this network, then it will connect to it. So let's say I want to, on my second PC that's running League of Legends right now, let's say I want this to connect to that PC that's running vMix. All I need to do is click Edit, and then type in the target IP, the local IPv4 of the other PC. Now deploy, you said time to buy a Stream Deck. You don't need to, that's the cool thing. So with BitFocus Companion, what you can do is if you have a phone that is connected to the same Wi-Fi, you can click mobile buttons and it gives you a tablet surface like this that you can press. And this is only on your, bleh, I can't speak. This is all on your mobile, so you can press anything. You can put this on your tablet, iPad, whatever you want, even on a second monitor and click on buttons here and this will work with vmix yeah do you guys not have phones good old blizzard yeah so here you go you can basically use this and have infinite pages so even if you have one stream deck you don't need more because you can use pages so going back to my companion here i've got my vmix linked you can go to buttons and this is where you edit all of your buttons to control vmix so i'm going to click on one the set button type regular button and here are the different things you can do. So I'm going to click on key down slash on actions. I'm going to type in preview. And then it comes up with send input to preview. And then I'm going to type in cams. So when I press this button, the cams input will be sent to preview. So here in input, I'm going to type fs underscore two cam. So now when I click this, it goes to preview. And then I'm going to add another button. You can go to presets, studio coast, here, and then transitions, and then I'm going to have my stinger one, boom. So now when I press this button, it will do the transition. Easy. I'm going to press it again, it's going to transition back. Now another nice thing you can do with this software is click on this button, you have instance feedback. So click on here, you can do live. Uh, there are presets with companion here, these ones, so you can do all of these things, you can change times, uh, you can have a certain page be clicked on. So for example, for the map vetoes, you can trigger each one with a button press. So here you see title page 1, 2, and 3, and I'm going to call this GFX underscore veto. Is that the name of it? Yes. GFX veto. So now when I go to the veto screen, and I press this button... It will do the first veto, second veto, and third veto. Is it working with MIDI? So, this works with a lot of stuff, and you can see everything here. So, add by category, and you have all of these different things. So, 
if your whatever software you have or equipment, you can basically check here if you have it or not. You can even control PC cameras and things like that. Yeah, you can use vmix shortcuts with Vimix as well, yeah. So you can do everything through Companion pretty much. Or if you can't do it through Companion, on vmix you can click on Settings, then go to Shortcuts, and here you have MIDI. And then you can use a Shuttle Pro as well, joysticks, whatever you want. But I would recommend just using Companion if you can. So going back to the buttons, uh, my other favorite thing is, um, is instance feedback. So my cams, I'm going to type in Live. Change colors based on live input. So, when my fs underscore two cam is live, this will go red. Then I'm also going to type in preview. Change colors based on previewed input. If it's on preview, it's going to go green. So, when I click this button, it is a green because it's on preview. When I then transition to it and it's live, it's going to turn red. So, boom, now it's red. So, you can basically do this for every single scene you have, or every single input. Um, and you can also do that with audio. So you can basically create your own kind of stream deck on this. And if you don't have one, click mobile buttons and just type this in on your phone, your tablet or whatever. So you can control everything pretty much. It's super, super useful and I really recommend it. Um, and then this will also automatically go onto your stream deck if you turn it on without having the stream deck app open. Or you can have the companion thing on your stream deck and then it will do it. So as you can see, if I press the button here, it will do the transition. Boom. Transition. There you go. So this is what BitFocus Companion is used for. I would really recommend it. Now, uh, another thing that I'm going to show you guys is to data integration. So now that I've shown you guys how companion works, another cool thing is, duh, 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 duh. if I move that out of the way, go back to my profile, boom, yeah, data integration. So let's say I want the data for the cameras to be used from somewhere else. Let me go back to this. Yeah, so I want this Google Sheet to control what's on here so basically how some of you said you made a web controller for controlling stuff you can essentially do that with a google sheet or an excel sheet so you need to go into google sheets and create a api account uh, and it's going to give you a google cloud platform api key that you need but i'm not going to show it because then you guys can use my key which is really annoying and it charges money past a certain point um, so it's free, uh, but you can also make it basically take data faster, which then charges money, but it's it's basically free. So you can go to data sources, you can click add, and I'm going to move this off the screen because it probably has my info in. There you go. So data sources on the bottom right, click plus, click Google Sheets, and it comes up with this. Click settings. You put in the URL of the spreadsheet, which is this, and then a Google API key, which I'm going to put on off screen. And then you click OK, and it will load. So there's currently nothing in there. I'm going to write one, two, three. So it should load in a second. As you can see, sheet one is there, and one, two, three is there in a the column. So I'm going to move this on the screen. I've got that right there. And if I change this to like 50, this will then update within five seconds, essentially. Um, so, yeah, there you go, it's 50 now. So you could use a Google Sheet to edit data. Do you need to edit the showing sheet settings on the sheet? Yeah, so when you set up a Google Sheet, it basically gives you a small tutorial on how to do it. So when you click Google Sheets, I don't want to press it because it's going to show my key. You click Share, and then here you click, anyone on the link can view, and then you just copy it and then just add it in. So, let's say I want to put in some data that will change phrases and previous names. So I'm going to put caster1, and then here I'm going to put caster2. Th these are just labels for myself. Below, I'm going to put name1, and then on the right, name2. It's going to make it look nicer. Boom. So, this field, I'm going to make it green for it's changeable. I always mark it this way. Anything that is green, you can change 
and it will change on broadcast. So changing this will change Fraser's name, changing this will change Prius's name. And the way you do it is you go to GFX. What is the limitation on this key? So the limitation is it updates every 5,000 milliseconds, so five seconds, uh, but you can upgrade it to a paid version, which basically it, it's, it works with Google API. So it's fully free, but it doesn't do it really fast. It's every 5,000 milliseconds. If you pay to have an increased poll rate or whatever it's called, then you can have the data be pulled a lot faster. But it's it's all free. But if you want to pay, you can pay more and have it faster, essentially. Um, or you can use a Excel sheet or any other way of adding data. So by a text file, a RSS, JSON, Excel. I have I never paid for it, Ferme, so I cannot tell you because I will never pay for it. I would rather just wait the five seconds max. <laughs> anyway. Moving back to the Google Sheet, let's say, as uh, War Warchalk said in the chat, a leaderboard for a Battle Royale game. You could have a leaderboard of like 50 names, and once you set this up on vMix once, you have it ready. So going to my GFX cams graphic, I will right click on this, title editor, and then here I have caster1. I'm going to click on data source, and then I'm going to click data source, Google Sheets, table, sheet1, column, column two, and then I'm going to go to row four, which is name one. So now this is name one. I'm going to go to caster two, data source. I'm going to click Google Sheets, column three, row four, name two. So now if I change this to potato and salad, this will change to potato salad within five seconds. There you go. Potato salad has changed. So what you can do with this is you can also control images. So this GFX Veto screen, right? You can do, let's say you have an image. So image to source. I'm going to create that. I'm going to call this. I'm going to go to where the image is saved, which is here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to copy this backslash. So. There's a function on Google Sheets, so depending on how much of a wizard you are, I suck at this. It has something called concatenate, which will attach different things. So I'm going to attach, where is this on my keyboard? There you go. I'm going to attach this with whatever is in this cell and add a .png at the end. There you go. So. Let me increase this size. It's a very scuffed spreadsheet, as you can see. Where, where did I put this? It is V7, which is here. Yeah. So whatever I put here, for example, potato, it will create GT potato slash PNG. Let me add this slash. There you go. Okay, yeah, Fermi, you can also do it that way. I haven't done it before, um, but... I've always learned to do it with concatenate, um, and your way is probably a lot easier. <laughs> but damn it, always learn new things. So, basically, here I have this link, and it points to a folder on my PC, and whatever I type in here, map one, this will be map one PNG. This will be map two. What you can do is go into data validation. Is it here? And you can create a list of items map one and a map two click save and i have a drop down menu of map one and map two so whatever you click on the drop down it will change here now on vmix you click data source and you just point the spreadsheet to that place on the column there you go so now when i have map one this is map one if i do map two this should change to map two there you go Yeah, as Fraser said, I always set a call, uh, sorry, cell with the drive path. So right here, this is where the drive is for my stuff. So I could just, instead of having this, I could click that. There you go. So now it should work. So now whatever you change this to, if you send it to someone else on a different PC, you can just put whatever and it will create this. So here you can choose map one, map two, and you can essentially create a whole spreadsheet that will control your entire vMix 
um, cells, change the cast names, all that stuff. So you can create kind of a master spreadsheet and have everything working from there. And that is essentially it. Now let me see if my camera works. Overheated. Okay, we're back. Cool. So that is essentially it, I guess. Um, I I think I've showed all the basics of pretty much adding a new a bunch of new scenes and basically creating a broadcast from scratch on vMix. If you use OBS and know how to use OBS, this will be mega mega simple for you. Go back. Yes, I need to turn it on on OBS. I I know. I remember. Don't worry. Let's see if it works. Oh, nope, doesn't work. Why is my camera overheating? God damn it! The pain. Oh, is it working now? It should. Nope, my camera's dead. All right, it's a Fujifilm XT3, but it's been on for like three hours, so it just basically died. Yeah, so as Fraser said, even he learned a few things from this. vMix is such a unique piece of software. It's amazing. No matter if you've been using it for thousands of hours, you will always learn like a really small thing that someone else doesn't know. Everyone has their own way of doing things. It's very diverse. Depends on how creative you are, you can do anything you want. If you want to do something really amazing and complicated and advanced, you can. There's nothing stopping you. All right. So, I'm going to go back to my cam screen, which is just going to say Elgato. There you go. Boom. The Elgato no signal. Perfect. So, what I'm going to do next week is do a session on replays, uh, and then I'm going to go more advanced into creating graphics for broadcast. Yeah, that's a hashtag ad on the Elgato. You've got your remote flying across the screen. Yeah, so next week I'm going to do a replay session. After that, I'm going to point a fan at the camera. Honestly, I should. Wait, I've got... I turn on my fan in my room, which probably would help. And I have a window that's shut next to it. But I've got like three candles lit up in my room, so everything is burning and dying. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, so as I said, next week I'm going to do a session on replays, most likely. I'm going to try and get guests to come in and do talks. Um, and I've got a lot of other stuff planned. Uh, I'm probably going to start making content. And thank you for the sub, Mr. Reed. I can't talk. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start making regular content. Uh, I'm going to start interviewing people in production. Uh, throw it all on YouTube and basically just carry on teaching people. Because doing this is a lot simpler than people think in certain situations. Um, it really depends on how much effort you want to put into it, essentially. So I would really recommend everyone to just download it, have a look at it, uh, and I'm going to make sure I do regular streams of teaching. And if anyone has any questions, just feel free to DM me on Twitter, reach out on Twitter, uh, and do whatever you like. And just hit me up, I'll be happy to respond. Can you do ATEM stuff? So I don't have uh, anything ATEM at my house currently. Uh, the only thing that I have black magic is deck links in my PCs. Um, I am going to be biting an eight, buying an ATEM Mini, uh, so I won't be making content on that currently, uh, but I do have a load of equipment to play around with at the uh, university studio uh, that I work at. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of awesome broadcasts with the students there, um, and that's what I was making the desk for. We're going to be doing a Halo stream uh, and have students set everything up. Yeah. I, so, Mr. Reed, I actually learned how to use EVS over the last few months. Um, my, one of my first EVS shows was... Uh, recording interviews, doing highlights, and like playing, recording interviews, playing them back on delay, uh, doing highlights from the game, and things like that pretty much. So it was, it was really stressful at first, but I didn't fuck up, so I was pretty happy. And then after that, I went into doing a uh, 10 input uh, replay for Fortnite. So that was kind of stressful, but it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I got to use multiple controllers at the same time, and I feel really comfortable on it now. Um, and I'm actually going to do some EVS training on their uh, Divi, on their production switcher, on the 4th of January. So I'll, I'll share some stuff about that as well. Um, but yeah, I plan on making as much content as I can, 
uh, release it for you guys and teach everyone how to do remote broadcasts so people can level up what they do because it's honestly super simple. I would recommend everyone to do it. Um, and it's great. Yeah, I had a 10, 10 inputs of people shooting each other on Fortnite. It was, it was rough. <laughs> But yeah, thank you for everything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. So if you guys need anything, hit me up. Uh, I'm making a Discord. Would VMix work with Nintendo Switch? Yeah, so if you have a capture card, you can put a capture card into the Elgato and then it will work with VMix. So, Georgie, I'm happy to help you with it as well. Just hit me up um, on Twitter and I'll show you how everything works. All you just need a capture card and then VMix will take the capture card as a camera input. Uh, but as I said, next week I'll do a replay session uh, and I'll carry on doing more. And I'm also going to do a breakdown uh, video on my YouTube channel on how my whole setup works and explain how it all goes and make a few budget setups for people that people can buy. Yeah, so I've never worked mainstream broadcast, but I've only worked in esports uh, my entire life. I haven't had any normal job apart from esports. The only thing I did outside of esports was being a scare actor in a horror house. That was an escape room. And that's the only thing I did that wasn't esports related. But yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop out. It was a nice two hour session. So I will see you guys next week. And some small studios use vMix replays. Yep. And a lot of big ones, as Fraser said. Uh, a lot of big studios use vMix replays. It's amazing. All right, hell yeah, Georgie, let me know what you need and I'll help you out. But yeah, my Twitter on the bottom right, Twitter is life, Twitter is love, so I'll see you guys on there. Bye bye. And that's my dog crying now because uh, she came back. See you guys in a bit. Okay, I went on the wrong screen. That's my starting soon, not stream ending.